your maternity assessment, midwife. Every minute of every hour. Oh. Is this what they call active labour? Of every day. We keep calm and eat cake. A baby is born in Britain. Tango! I want him out now. I can't do this anymore. Is baby's head out yet? I am your big brother. <laughs> we filmed around the clock. Oh. Shall I get the midwife? Help, he's out. <laughs> in a busy maternity hospital to find out what it really feels like push 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 to bring new life into the world oh, something's happening down there <laughs> that's it that's it that's it baby's head's out you have got it is he coming <laughs> happy birthday little man <laughs> <laughs> Capturing new lives beginning <laughs> and others changing forever. <laughs> so proud of you both. My gorgeous little daughter. There's been a lot of babies just popping out today. We love it. We wish they all just popped out. Oh yeah. I think there's one coming in 35 week or who might be contracting or might have a UTI. I couldn't assess it over the phone psychically, so I told her to go. Have you lost your power? <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute, let's get my ball. I'll see you later. <laughs> When we walk onto Delivery Suite, we never know what we're going to be faced with. And we see everything that life has to offer. We see the joy and the happiness and the births. But we also see the despair and the sorrow and the sadness. But ultimately, you know that you're going to be helping a couple through a life-changing event. Bonfire night. Yeah, around yeah, around bonfire night, wasn't it? We went, when we had a firework party. Yeah. And had quite a lot to drink. <laughs> we had not been in the house all that long, so no. we were um... making sure the neighbours knew where we were. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hiya. Yeah. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be looking after you. Okay. Do you want to come with me? Yeah. Do you realise that bonfire night was when my parents were staying over. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the other room. Yeah. Who else was staying over? Oh, my father. Did your dad stay? Yeah, yeah your dad, dad was staying. Yeah, the full house full. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes these examinations are a bit uncomfortable, particularly if your cervix is really far back. Yeah. So what I might need to ask you to do is just clench your fist and pop them underneath. Right, so you're going to just feel some cold jelly. But your cervix is really far back and quite thick. It's yeah. not open yet, so... I'm going to put this propus in, so it's a little pessary. A bit of fiddling, because I need to get it in the right place. Oh. Sorry, bring your legs up again. I don't think he'll cope. I don't think Pete, Pete will cope at all when uh, I'm in labour. I don't think he'll like it. I think it'll just stress you out because you won't be able to do anything. OK, if this doesn't go in the right place, it doesn't work. That's the thing. All blokes will be in the same situation when they're That's in a, pregnancy. With, with, you can't do anything. You know, you just sat there and they're in so much pain. It's like, what can I do? What can I do? How can I get take the pain away? And you can't. So it's, mm. I think that's the worst for it, for us, you know, for us men, is just being there. Okay, sorry, that was really uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, I'd have to go out of the room if it hurt any more, because I can't stand seeing her in pain. <laughs> really, really, it's not really pain, it's just uncomfy. When your cervix is so far back, yeah. you, you, you have to feel the way your cervix is. Generally, it's going like hell. You're all right there. Yeah. 
just a bit of a waiting game is is, is labour really. So if you need me for anything, just buzz. All right. Is that all right? Yeah, thank you very much. The other night I went out and um, and I couldn't decide what to have at the kebab shop, so I got a kebab and a burger. And did you eat it all? I did eventually. Had it the next day, leftovers. Oh, my favourite. Not the burger. Yeah. Cold. Not cold. Room it's temperature. On the side. <laughs> yeah. More. Can't put it in the fridge. It ruins it. It doesn't taste of anything then. Not yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll quick. Right, 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 right. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. What's going on? Oh, I think it's coming. <laughs> Come on, three. <laughs> you think? You think? Something's happening. Yeah, it's been happening all night. Have a seat in here and I'll be with you as soon as I can. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. I'll take this off. I've got Dylan from a previous relationship and he's five already. And then I've got Harrison Lee on the way. Oh. Oh. Which <laughs> I found out I'm in basically the same predicament as I was with Dylan being a single mum. She's brought Dylan up good. I know she's had bits of help, mm. but I think 80% of it is her own. But I think she's been a good mum, definitely. Ooh. I told him I was pregnant and it was a quick, hello, goodbye, see you later. That was over quicker than it started, basically. But, well... We'll manage. So, Ellen. Hello. Hello. Tell me what's going on. Last night, I've been thinking I've got belly ache. I didn't think no of it. I didn't even think of labour. <laughs> Duh. Maybe moving around, all right? Oh, yeah. 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 And what about your contractions? How often are they come in now? I think there's one doing it now. OK. I would prefer a quick birth than a slow one, long one like Dylan was 24 hours nearly. So I'd prefer. An easy, quick birth, if possible. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. Fine. Breathe, Ellen, breathe it. Breathe. Do you want me to give you a stretch and sweep? You're about one centimetre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I need you to give me the nod, Ellen. Well, Ellen, say second. yes. Yeah, but do it nicer, please. Always. I'm always nice. Ow! Ow! It's all right, it's done. It's all right, it's you've done. Got, you've got, done. got, Fuck a, you've it's... got a contraction as well, I think. Mm. Sorry, yes, I have a nearly flat tube. I'm sorry, I have done that. I went like that. Oh, stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All done, all done. I'll oh. leave you alone. A bottle of water's on the floor down here. Yeah. So she picked it up. It's down this side. Uh, Just like being at home, this it gets sat down. You want me up? I was thinking, how am I going to? How am I going to propose? Do I just stand there and say, "Will you marry me?" Or I thought, I bet I'll, I'll do it a bit, you know, something different. Oh, it's there. So you could have got it yourself. Yeah. You bought me a tiger suit for Christmas, didn't you? One of those onesie suits, all in one tiger suit. <laughs> I says, I'm just going to go get your other present. Try on I says, I'll just take this tiger suit. I'll just, I'll just take it anyway, just in case. Try on. Whipped it on. <laughs> and I come down and uh, I, got on, I got on one knee, didn't I? And then proposed. Yeah, it's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> it made a laugh, so I thought, if I make a laugh, she'll say, yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. did. Yeah. I'm going to have to take it home with me. For a computer chair. I mean, now you're talking. Can you get right back? Oh, yeah. Well... Right, right back. 
when we first found out, we were a bit shocked because we didn't think it would happen so quick. I didn't think I would get pregnant so quick. <sighs> oh, you'll be welcome for that. <laughs> I couldn't get my head around it, you know, I was thinking, no, she's joking, she's got to be... She's you didn't believe me, No, did I says, you? no, no, I says, we're going to get some more tests. I says, this isn't right. And she went, right, so we went out and got some more tests, didn't we? And... Mm. <laughs> I think it took, just a t took a while to sink it in. Right. It just didn't seem real. It's probably comfier than that bed. I bet it is. I'll sit on there later and just see. But you will not. Brought a friend in for you. Uh, uh. Oh. What do I do with that? Sit on it, love, like this. Sit on it. Oh, for fall, like no, like this. And that's all you have to do. Like I this. I like this. Bouncy this way, bouncy that way. My upbringing. My mum's done it. It's like me, what I'm going through now. Mum's always done it with each and every one of her kids. She's been mum and dad. Which I think we've been better off with mum being mum and dad than having dad in his life because, really, honestly. Hello. I'm going to get off. I'm going home. I'm shattered. Don't know about you, but I'm shattered. <laughs> Cream cracker. Yeah, I bet you are. Bet you are. Linda's going to come and see you. She's going to look after you. It might be that she sends you to the ward for a little while. <sighs> yeah. When you're on the ward, only one person will be able to be with you. Yeah. OK. Oh. Grandma's looks after everybody. Um, make sure everybody's OK before Grandma's OK. When I was a teenager, like, I left Mum's and I, I used to live here with Grandma and Grandad. We're close. It's done. Probably more for me than she has anybody else in family. Look, I've got pain constantly. Have you? Have you? Right, I'll leave you to it. I'm, I'm saying my goodbyes. OK. See you later. Good luck with everything. Bye, -bye. thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh. All right, we'll try. See you. Bye. See you, love. So I'm going to send you to the antenatal ward. And once you get going, they'll send you around to delivery suite from there. OK. I'm going to get a taxi straight from here. I'm sorry the little bugger's not here. It's OK, don't let it bother you. I shall be back tomorrow. Well, if things start happening, Grandma, what do you want me to do? Oh, my. This will be it, near my bed. Right. How do I do that? Oh, she's got some lovely long eyelashes, though. I'm stuck on the leather. You will be. Oh, my back. That's better there. A bit lower, a bit lower. Oh, yeah, there. Well, that's your bum, darling. It's not your back. No, it is. It's, not, it's my lower back. <laughs> Honestly. We know that we're having a, a little boy. From a young age, I've always wanted children. I've just got to, had to find the right time and the right person to have children with. Well, unfortunately, from the 20 week scan, it's obviously not been um, such a good experience. Um, and it's been quite difficult ever since then when we found out that the baby had a, a diaphragmatic hernia. Um, from finding that out, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, really, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, numerous tests, scans, sort of took the excitement away from things. On a normal pregnancy, you get your nursery ready, you've got all the clothes, you've got all the cot, the furniture, you've got everything the nursery done. And it's just a shame because anyone with any problem with the baby that you don't know obviously what the outcome will be, you can't plan for the future because you don't know what the future will be. With diaphragmatic hernia, the survival rate that's quoted is usually about 50%. But that doesn't take into account the fact that some are on the right side, which dramatically lowers the survival rate. So that's 
actually pump this up a bit, couldn't I? To lean on. Just for me while I'm leaning on it. They confirmed it was a right-sided congenital diaphragmatic hernia. At that stage, you're not going to just give up and, and say, I'm not going to carry on. There was no other um, symptoms, that, like any other disabilities that the baby would have. It was only the, the hole we wasn't in the diaphragm. We weren't prepared, so. was we? We wasn't prepared to terminate. No. Once you felt your baby and I'd kicking. Never, yeah, yeah, kicking and... <laughs> You know, and Once you felt feeling his moving. hand, for, you know, out the stomach, you're feeling his hand and stuff, and you think, well, I'm, I'm so, you know, happy that we didn't go through mm. that. No, we made the right decision. Mm, yeah. Oh, I can fit my belly on there then. <laughs> Come on, move me back now. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's important for me to keep my emotions inside because. It shows her that I'm strong and I'm here for her. Got no fingerprints left. Rub them off. It is helping a bit. If uh, if I was crying all the time and depressed and moping around and stressing at her, and what kind of man would that make me be? Still there. Not comfy as the seats. When... You don't want to be on this because you won't get out of it. No, I know. I, I don't. I would never try and cry in front of her, ever. Oh, I guess we're in Kai can see outside. My mum's. Yeah. She here. Oh, what am I looking for? I'm like four stories up. Is she here? Yeah, hello. Where? To watch Haley going through everything uh, with the pregnancy, it's it's hard, um, because when she cries, I cry. It is hard. <sighs> hello, lovey. Hello. <laughs> Pain. Tears. Oh, I've had all the tears. <laughs> just pain now. I know, I know, it don't get any better. It'll be lovely to have my first grandchild. And I can't wait to push a pram. And have a cuddle. <laughs> and spoil it rotten and send it back. <laughs> you sit down, Mum. Can have I a sit rest? Down? Yeah, That's you good of you. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good run, though. How long did it take you? I set off at seven. Not bad, is it? No. no. Yeah, how are you feeling? I keep getting contractions. <laughs> okay. How often are they coming? Every couple of minutes. Okay. Can I feel your tummy? Is that all right? On my last experience, I had drugs twice and I didn't really like the effect. Plus, you don't really remember much, so I'd like what a birth this time with no pain relief so I can remember everything, everything that goes on, yeah. <laughs> no, go on. Waters. Waters have gone. Oh, fuck. Let me just go get a midwife. Right quick. The waters have gone, love. Ah. Uh, contraction, man. It's all right. Will you get out my face? Sorry. <laughs> In labour with Dylan, it was painful, very painful. Grandma called me the exorcist because it was like, get off me every time she touched me. I didn't, I didn't want to be fussed over. You want normal? Can I have a look? Oh, what do you do? Wait. Okay. Don't touch me yet. <laughs> this time, I know it's going to be a lot more painful because there's not going to be no drugs involved. So it's going to be, ouch. And I hope I'm not exorcist this time. Do you feel like you can't help but push? Like you push without thinking about it? Like now while the contraction's coming, I need to push. Contraction. <laughs> Get off. Labour is extremely unpredictable. If we could predict it, we'd be very rich as midwives. You know, we'd have crystal balls in every one of our bags that we take to work. Hello, Avon. Will you get hold of me, Grandma? I can't get hold of it. The waters have broke. 
But you try and get hold of Grandma because I've rung her and I can't get no answer. All right, love. All right, bye, love. Oh, dear God. Women genuinely could be two centimetres to fully dilated and about to have a baby. And that literally can happen in the journey from Anthony to Ward to delivery suite. With Dylan, I have family around, like grandma, mum and stuff like that. If someone were to do it without any family around them, I reckon it could be daunting. But as I've got everybody around me and I've done it all with Dylan, Harrison will be easy peasy, definitely. Can you sit right down in the water and really drink? All right, you're not gonna... Right down, right down. Are you waiting for, are you waiting for someone else to come? Oh, yeah, another no, birthday. Oh, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, love. I'm not... Don't stop it. <laughs> oh, what? Stop it. I can't do that. I haven't got them powers. I've been mistreated in the past by men, so I'd prefer my boys if they grow up stronger than a man like that and to know never to be awful to a woman, mistreat a woman, just to love and respect her like the wood my mum, my grandma, me. All right, okay. <laughs> Baby's head's coming beautifully, Ellen. She's yeah. fucking handsome. Mm. Come on, Ellen, we need to do some big breathes. Come on, just breathe, just breathe. Oh, put your legs to me, that's it. Just breathe, 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 breathe. Breathe, 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 breathe. That's it. Breathe. Oh, another push breathe. now. You can do a push. Breathe. Go on, Ellen, you need to push now, darling. Come on, Ellen, push. push. Fucking trying. Push. During my childbirth, my cousin Lisa's coming and she will be my rock. She'll give me the oomph when I've got none left in me. She'll, she'll make sure I've got the strength to pull through it all. Do you want to do a bit of a push? Push, now. Do you want to? Come on. Come on, Ellen, push. Come on, come on. Come on, that's the one. Normal. From being 18, I've been a mum. I mean, you can be a wife, sister, daughter, whatever. But first of all, you're a mum. And that is it. And that is your job for life. You never lose it, not ever. OK, right, I need to give the baby to somebody. Then let's get... Uh, who's having him? He's on first cuddle, then. Hey, <laughs> Grandma. Grandma. Are you having him? Right, then. Oh. OK. Beautiful. So I need to give you a hand to Harvey. It's nice looking after babies and watching them grow. Hmm. I, I honestly feel good being a great grandma. It's a big family. Yeah. And there's a lot of a lot of love in it. It is. And, and we're stronger because of it. Oh, did you know little smile? There's more than enough love to go around for him. Definitely.
there's some different early to show you around. During my pregnancy, I've not really liked going to all the baby shops because I'm going to see everyone there with pushing prams, with newborn babies, and, and that's something I can't really cope with. And it, it's hard seeing a brand new baby, thinking, you know, am I ever going to be in that position? So this is our back entrance to oh, right. the neonatal unit. So while you're on delivery suite and your baby's on the neonatal unit, you come this way. But yeah. once you've left delivery suite and gone to you the ward, you go the way. main entrance, yeah. The baby's condition is diagnosed as a diaphragmatic hernia, which is a, a hole in the diaphragm. When there's a missing piece, then the organs all move round and can move up into the chest. Because there's less space in the chest cavity for the lungs, your lungs end, the, the baby's lungs end up smaller. That's the nursery part. This one's high dependency, and then there's two intensive care units just around yeah. here. Although that's not much of a problem before the baby's born, when, when the baby's born, it means the lung can't expand properly. And so these babies are really often very critically ill when they're newborn. So this is Haley and Pete. Hi. 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 So the, the Haley's coming for induction for a baby with diaphragmatic hernia. When we found out about it on the 20 week stand, I think it was sh shock. It was like, it was like some, you know, like you, you've been run over by a truck. It just hit you. It was just a wall where you couldn't have gone anywhere. You just have to uh, deal with it. Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm one of the sisters mm. on the unit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, you just walked into intensive care, and this is where your little one mm. will be coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to come this way, and I'll show you. When we decided to carry on with the uh, pregnancy is because I think the fact is that um, why not give them a chance? I've had loads of chances in my life with various things that I've done. So why can't you give someone, you know, a little uh, chance, so to speak? That's the least he deserves. So when your little boy is um, delivered, he'll come on here, pop him on this platform. Okay? Yeah. And it's just a, a warm just to keep him nice and warm. And mm -hmm. Whilst he's inside me, obviously he's protected, he's in his own little um, bubble in there. He's quite safe, he's growing, he's maturing, his lungs are getting stronger and bigger. He's in his own little incubator, so that's where I've always wanted to keep him. But I'll know that's all going to change, because um, when obviously he comes out, he'll have to um, try and breathe for himself, and that'll be the hardest bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crying is, is, is meant by so many ways. You can cry at a funeral, you can cry at someone's jokes, you can laugh and cry, can't you? I think if I, it, this is a different cry. If you cried in this situation, it, it could destroy everything. You know, you, you could just l lose it from there. You miss it, the scene, you cry, that's it. You can't cry. You can't show, it's best not to show your emotions because they're going through enough themselves about taking yours on board. So you've just got to carry on like everything's normal. I'll be all right in a minute. I've never had a McDonald's breakfast. They are amazing. Sausage, double sausage, egg, cheese. What do you mean double sausage? It's a flat sausage, like a patty, like a burger. So it's not like a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I do know what you mean. I've seen a picture of one. It's not for me. Like, I'm more of a continental breakfast sort of person. Just 
breathing gas if you need to. Yay! 10 centimeters. Good. Can you just move it? Oh, keep doing that. Can you do it? Just wait a bit, yeah. Yeah, no, not that much. Not that much. Just there. Oh, slow. Keep going. 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 Is that contraction going off or is it still there? Going. Going. Oh, I think. Okay. Hello, yes, Lesson Delivery Suite. Would you be able to attend room 14? Healy's food with the dark erotic care and he's delivering. Not going to be long now, though. Lovely, thanks. Bye. How long will they take? About 90 seconds, yeah. Well done. Well done. Really, nearly done. Really well. When you're actually in the room and the baby's just about to be born, you understand that to this woman, this is the last moments of her pregnancy. And now she knows that while that baby's inside her, that baby's alive. And she's relinquishing that. And she just wants to hold on to that pregnancy for as long as she can. It's a very sombre time. It's just exactly the opposite of what you would expect for a, you know, a healthy baby being born. When the baby's actually born, um, our whole team would be sort of ready, ready for that occasion. And we'd have some senior doctors there and a senior nurse as well to, to help stabilise the baby. And diaphragmatic hernia is probably one of the sort of medical emergencies in the newborn period because these babies, if they do need help, need a breathing tube putting down into their lung really immediately after birth. Big, big breath this time. Yeah, real big one. Right, go on. All up. All up. A wide. Yes, go on. Let him out. Let him out. Go on. No, no, keep pushing through that. Go on, a bit harder. Your baby's kind of telling us that he wants to come now. So what's important is a big breath in and push down for push me. This time really one, strong. Two. Let's have it. You go. So go on. The day he's born is the, is the scariest day rather than the happiest day of your life. It's sort of the opposite. Ah! Hayley, listen, Hayley. listen. Hayley, no, Hayley. Hayley, concentrate. Hayley, leave your gas. Leave your gas. Hayley, breathe your gas. Give me gas, give me gas. Take the gas. Take the gas, it's baby's head coming. Just listen to me and breathe that gas. That's your baby's head out. Go on, just that one more. One big push. One more. Open your eyes. Open your eyes, it's coming. You want to open your eyes and have a little look what's coming. <laughs> you just want to cut in the middle. Mm -hmm. Just give that a snitch for us. Well done. Well done, prepared um, in as much as they can. Uh, I don't think they'll ever be fully prepared for what's going to hit them. So I can only hope. And that's what we're hoping for, a miracle. What's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Heart rate now for good. Oh, God. <laughs> we popped the little breathing tube down. So I'm just helping him with his breathing now. Yeah. And they can't, they're sticking it all down, so they must be happy. I yeah. think we've got it in the right place. Yeah.
Once the baby's stabilized, um, we hopefully have time to show the parents the baby and let them have a little look and a cuddle, and then the baby's transferred around to the neonatal unit. because we won't be able to be with him straight away. He'll be whisked off and we'll just have to, you know, sit and listen and wait for news off the doctors, really, uh, which will be the, 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 just, like I say, a worrying, very worrying time for us. Caden, and he's at this moment in time is doing as well as we could expect. Really, he's he's nice and pink. Mm -hmm. the, the measurement of the oxygen in his level is about where we want it to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's achieving safe oxygen levels in his blood at the moment. Um, on a, on a first glance, he seems to be otherwise absolutely perfectly formed. And he's a nice, handsome little boy. <laughs> Sometimes, he, you know, we can get a slightly false impression in these first few hours. Mm -hmm. This is just a very early message to say, yeah. congratulations on a good normal delivery. That was a help. Yeah. Okay. But you've done your bit very well. It's over to him now. Yeah. <laughs> well, as soon as she's up to it, really. The, do the doctor's just putting this line in at the moment. Then we need to get an X-ray, and then after that, she could come round. Yeah. Delivery Suite, as much as it is a place of joy and happiness and new life coming into the world, we also have to deal with that sad time. We don't enjoy it, but I get just as much satisfaction in helping a woman give birth and having a fantastic experience as I do from helping a woman through the most horrific, horrific experience she will ever go through in her life. Caden, it's, it's, uh, it means fighter. Caden means fighter, and to me, that little boy is a fighter. And uh, I think Caden's a lovely name, and I think it just suits him perfect. Listen. Yeah. Get a bit closer. Just like a normal baby, if I if I put him in a if I put him in a, a, a chair and took him for a walk, he'd look like you know people. He'd just look like a normal baby, but it's inside. He's just not well at all inside. Look great outside, but he's just not well inside. Oh, he's tiny. Choking, yeah. His tiny little feet. There's then a, a difficult few days for the family, I think, because. Often the babies go through a kind of honeymoon period for a day or a few days where they're not too bad in terms of their lungs. But then sometimes the, the, si the smallness of the lung and the difficulties that causes can sort of begin to show itself and show more and more problems for the baby. And sadly, in some babies, they just never reach a point where they're stable enough to actually go for the corrective surgery. Hayley's always positive about it, which she should be. Uh, I struggle. If he does well at night, fantastic. 
you know, I'll be like, yeah, great, he's had a good night. But then I'll just keep my head on and I'll be like, let's just see what happens the next night, you know, let's just see what happens. It's hard for me to be really, really, really positive about things when you know what kind of situation you're in. I don't want to... I don't want to get my hopes up and then something happen because it'll just completely break my heart. So in all babies like this, the ultimate decision about when it's appropriate to operate revolves around getting them stable from a breathing point of view. And even if you operate and get the bowels out of the chest or the liver out of the chest, if the underlying lungs are too small, that's not compatible with long-term survival so it's not just as simple as an operation will fix this we've always got to be thinking about the, the rest of the baby as well roller coaster that's all i can it's just been awful <laughs> it's been awful last five days absolutely awful can change overnight, can change through the day, can change any time. He can be fine one minute and the next minute his pressure can go up or his oxygen will have to be put up. It, it's just, that's how it is. We like to use the phrase reorientation of care because we, we believe that we're simply just reorientation the focus from intensive care to more of a comfort care. In a situation like this, it's more of a discussion with all of the medical team. We discuss it with the surgeons and then we take the opportunity to sit down with the parents. Should we start with your questions first and we'll get those yeah. all out of the way and then I can take No, but what I was just asking is because he's on the uh, oscillator at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, obviously it can't be good for him to be on there for long term. Yeah. Uh, so ideally you want him off that, but what, yeah. how long can, you know, what's ideal for him to be on there and... We're sort of stuck in a dilemma really of... He's stuck on the ventilator, needing all of this support to keep his oxygen levels up. And that's saying to us now, we're a good few days old, we're not making any improvement. His lungs are very, very small. The blood supply is very, very small. If the condition he's in at the moment, the surgeons aren't going to take him to theatre. Because an operation would just mean that we'd get the bowel and his liver back down into his tummy. But the thing that will help, you know, that he needs to survive is lungs of a good size with a good blood supply. And I think it's quite clear to us all now that he doesn't really have that. <laughs> For the first time that we ever held him, we were saying goodbye, so we couldn't we couldn't enjoy that moment because we were just I was just distraught one mm, time. No, yeah, we both. Just, I mean, I couldn't just stop crying, so I didn't enjoy it one bit. It was just upsetting. You do feel a bit of uh, f failure because you can't do anything, you know. Uh, you can't do much. And you feel like you couldn't, you, you just feel like he think, you know, he's laid there hopeless and stuff and you want to do so much for him, you want to help him, and you can't. All you can do is hold him. Which is, uh, which is the worst feeling ever to ever go across, not knowing that you can do anything else for your, for your son. I think he had my nose. I think he had uh, a little button nose, just like me. Yeah, he did, yeah. But then he had Pete's chin. He had he? my chin. He had my chin, didn't he? Yeah. In his but eyes, I think he had our eyes, because we both got blue eyes anyway. Yeah. So it was a mixture. Really proud of Caden. 
it, it came into this world, it gave us six days of his life. It, it, obviously it was a very sad occasion, but at the same time it was a, a happy moment, obviously having a child and, and for him to get that far. Um, I've, yeah, I've not been as proud of anyone I have done in my life. I've got his little little foot and his hand on my chest with my heart is, and that's good. That's where it'll stay, and that's where he'll always be in my heart. He changed me. He's turned me into a man. He, he's taught me how to cope with difficult situations. He's taught me how to, you know, stand up to things, be strong, and. Now, I would have never have done that if it weren't for Caden. So in that respect, it's Caden that's made me a man who I am today. And I love him for that. I always will. to maintain a high level of control. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy. Is it a pizza? Oh, okay, let's take it. It's a pizza! <laughs> <laughs> I promised her, when this baby's born, I'll be there for her. All right, love, OK. He's getting me upset with crying. We both stood beside bed, and all of a sudden, it just leapt out like a salmon, you know, to water, <laughs> honestly. If you've been affected by any of the issues raised, there's support available online at channel4.com slash oneborn.